Hey everybody, welcome to Zoom. This is Jim Ingersoll and I'm, I'm glad to be hanging out with all of these guys. We've got a ton of people on from all over the country. Um, in some cases, it's fathers and their kids like Ben and Stephanie, which is awesome to see. And there's, you guys are great. I mean, you guys are really good investors and you're hanging out here. We wanna help some people and we also want this to be sort of a hangout too because we can't do it in person now. Like we can't get together and, and network in person. So I just wanna sort of uh, be able to network a little bit, but I also wanna be able to help people out. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. I just, I don't have much for slides because this is more open chat. I wanna talk about what's going on, what comes next and so on. But I really, I wanna hear from all of you and see what you guys think as well. All right, so here we go. Hey, there's the dealmaker. You guys recognize John Heyer there? It's one of my favorite pictures from Dealmaker because John Heyer yeah. is always entertaining and that was a really good picture I thought as he talked about opportunity zones. Um, as far as the, the Zoom works, you guys were asking about the background. You can hit the little camera uh, button next to you. And if you want to, you can, you can put a virtual background up. So if you got a, like a favorite picture from a travel or something like that, you can throw it up, um, anything you want. So Gordon's got like the world, uh, the world view there, which is awesome. Um, so you can do that pretty easily. You can have video on or you can have video off. It's up to you, Christina and Lloyd, good to see you guys as well. So it's up to you. I don't care if your video is on or off. <clears throat> Believe me, I don't love seeing myself on video um, either. I actually hate it. So. I understand if you don't want it on and then chat with each other guys and you can do that easily uh, by just saying hello in the chat box there's going to be a lot of chatting going on because you guys a lot of you guys are friend sure. uh, a lot of you guys are friends so say hello catch up if somebody's got an urgent need <coughs> like if you've got a closing that you need to get some funding for or if you've got a deal that you're not going to close on i mean feel free to to share that as well um so you can uh, promote your, your business a little bit, or if you've got a, a website or something, feel free to share it. If you've got a great web resource, you can share it. Like Martine, I saw that you, what you posted in Inner Circle this morning, that was awesome on the Facebook marketing. Glad you're using that. And uh, John Mori, um, I was gonna have you do like a virtual uh, salsa dance. Ah, oh, you're funny. <laughs> you are, then stand up, give a little, you know, whatever you do. You've been trying to teach me that you guys that know me know I can't dance. Well, well, you know, when, when let me take off my, my, my screen here so you can see me better. Okay. My wife might have to virtually salsa dance with you, John. Oh, oh you boy. That, that, that will my be great. My brother Bill knows I can't dance. And anybody who's been with me on like a cruise and stuff, you guys know I don't dance. I don't. I don't sing, dance, or act. Okay, well, see, if you want to do a salsa dancing, you know, all you yeah. have to do is just kind of relax there a little bit and just let it happen <laughs> like that and just like the shimmy, then, then you're good oh, to you go. Give a little wiggle, come on. Just just a little wiggle. All you need is just a little shimmy, and then like you're good. That, all right, John? <laughs> <clears throat> it's all beautiful, right. it's beautiful. All right. I just say that because, I mean, we need to have fun while we – while we're in like self quarantine, a lot of states are in total lockdown. By the way, like there are some, like in Virginia, we're on a stay, stay at home order, but real estate and construction can still go. There are places in the country where there is no real estate activity. Pennsylvania is one of them. Um, and others that are just a major challenge if you're going to try to do it. Justin, I think that's true in uh, Colorado. This is my contact information. The, uh, the best place to really connect with me is becoming my Facebook group, group Real Estate Investor Success. Many of you guys are in there. It's very fast growing. And that's probably the easiest place to get, a, get more of me than you want. So success in a crisis requires a great mindset and a great network. Our world has a lot of problems. Our market has a lot of challenges coming up. And we got to ask ourselves, like, how are we going to position ourselves to solve them? Um, I don't know if Tom Olson is on, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. I know he's going to run a little late. He's going to talk to him. I'm here. Hey, Tom. Hey, good. What's up, buddy? Shirt. 
We, we, we can sing a, du a duet today. <laughs> I told you I don't sing, dance, or act. Oh, my word. Oh, it's horrible. Tom, I miss you, but it's good to see you. I, I, I wrote a song in this whole pandemic thing. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know. Well, I, don't, I don't know if your audience is going to want to hear it or not. Right, so. let's see, how many of you guys want to hear Tom sing? Are you sure? <laughs> also, like, yeah. Sing it. Uh, oh, my goodness. I, I don't, it's it's kind of catchy. You guys might leave um, singing this tune. So, and you might hate me when this is over. Okay? Are you sure? Bring it. All right, let's go. Here we go. Ready? You have to get a little beat going, and maybe even John might even be able to, like, dance to it a little bit. It's kind of, like, a little rappy, you know? Oh, I kind of need to, like, rap. put my hat down and, like, start like this or something. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Here we go. Okay, ready? You don't want to get corona. No, you don't want to get corona. Stay away. I don't want to. Because I don't want to get corona. It's bad for you, it's like the flu, but worse is we don't know what's the cause or what's the cure, but what we know is we don't want to get corona. No, you don't want to get corona. You don't want to get corona. Day and night, that's all I hear. It's spreading fast, it's spreading wide. It took over China, Italy, and now it's here. It's causing hype, it's causing divide. You don't want to get corona. No, you, you don't want to get corona. Stay away, I don't want to. Because you don't want to get corona. School shut down, I can't go to church. And now they say no restaurants for us. The president's on TV again. No NBA, no NHL. What? No MLB? Why? Because you don't want to get corona. No, you don't want to get corona. Stay away, I don't want to. Because I don't want to get corona. I have a beef, are you aware? There's no TP anywhere. I bet Charmin and Scott's are loving this. It's like they came up with this. You don't wanna get Corona. No, you don't wanna get Corona. Stay away, I don't wanna. Cause I don't wanna get Corona. Let's just hope they get this fixed before we see those little ticks. It's imperative. We get this in time for, then we'll have Corona and Lyme. You don't want to get Corona. No, you don't want to get Corona. Stay away, I don't want to. Because you don't want to get Corona. You don't want to get Corona. Tom, you fantastic. don't want to get Corona. <laughs> Tom, I mean, All right. I, I'm, I know you really well. It's my I, debut. You know, I write music and sing. I mean, I've been to your place in Indiana. You've been to my house in Virginia a couple times. We're both from Jamestown, New York, like my brother Bill. But I didn't know you could do any of that. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. All right. So as you can see, guys, we're just going to sort of uh, have fun today. And I hope you guys are okay with that. Tom, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Awesome. So what My CD guys... will be coming out later this week. <laughs> I want to see it on YouTube. It'll <laughs> go, man. Top of the charts. Right. So what is everybody reading and listening to? What are you learning about? What are you grateful for today? Who are you hanging out with during quarantine? I mean, that's kind of the hard part. Um, you know, what, what, what are you reading? What are you listening to? What podcast has kind of gripped you? If you want uh, Netflix recommendations, I'm telling you, chat with Carter. He knows them all. He and I have been hooked on like the same ones, but I will tell you, Tom Olson and Becky got me hooked on the show last summer too. So thank you for that, Tom. But Carter is definitely your Netflix guy. Um, and uh, I've been, I've enjoyed uh, doing that with them. Um, so look at all this stuff coming in, which is awesome. I did watch a new uh, documentary on Netflix the night before last. Um, um, Brittany that had her arm cut off by the shark, the surfer. I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it right now. But it was awesome. I would highly recommend it. This girl, she was surfing at 13, like she was going to be headed to being like the world champion surfer. You guys know who I mean, Brittany, whatever her name is from Hawaii. <clears throat> she had her arm removed by the shark, 
And like two months later, she was back on her surfboard. And I just want to tell you, like, if you have fear going through coronavirus, if you have fear about the real estate market, if you have fear about being an entrepreneur, go watch that video and uh, it'll help you remove some fear. It'll inspire you to get back on your board and get moving. It was amazing. So Tom, talk to us a little bit about mindset. Maybe start with that list that you just posted in my Facebook group because I thought it was really good. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll jump in if you want. So, um, and I, I've kind of been saying this ever since this whole thing started, but I kind of think at the beginning, most people weren't willing to listen. Um, and maybe even our own selves, Jim, maybe, maybe me and you even, you know, to a certain degree, when there's so much uncertainty going on and you really have no idea what, you know, the next week's going to bring. And, you know, like most of us used to kind of look at our bank accounts every month or every quarter and just kind of like look through it. And now, you know, we're finding ourselves probably looking at every single, you know, account almost every day. Not that it's changed, you know, any, but uh, we're, we're really kind of focused on, on uh, making sure that we don't we don't not only get through this today, but I think my biggest fear is uh, has kind of been um, three, four, or five months from now. Yeah. Um, and you know, I I did write uh, re re as soon as we started this whole thing. I sat down with my leadership team and we kind of mapped out a whole plan for our for our all of our different companies. And I actually wrote an ebook um, to help companies and to help, you know, purpose-driven entrepreneurs get through any kind of crisis, really. Um, and it, it's on our website. It's, it's free. If anybody wants to get that, just go to our website and just, um, you know, just let, let me know you want it and, and, we'll, and we'll get you that, that ebook. Um, but it really, like, it, it's about a 42-page read. It's a pretty good read. Um, but, but, but outside of, that's all specific to your business and the things that you've got to be doing right now and focus on in your business. But outside of that, like, it's what we always say, you know, I mean, know what your purpose is at the very begin at the very in at the top of the mountain in the bottom of the valley it doesn't matter where you're at in life if you are purpose driven if you are living life on purpose for purpose being proactive instead of reactive if you're living your life that way th that's what's going to help you get through this um and 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 it's living breathing every single day uh with that purpose in mind. And, and a lot of people are going to quit during this thing. Um, I, I really believe that a lot of people are going to get to their end of their rope and they're going to quit and they're going to give up. Um, and, but I believe the people that will stay in there and the people that will, will fight it out, they believe that that purpose and who they're serving, that bigger purpose, that higher power is so much more valuable and so much more important than whatever that is that they're going through. Um, I, something if you, you so you kind of asked like what we're reading, what we're plugging into. This is somebody I have recommended for years. And even back to this, I kind of got off the rails a little bit, but I've gone back to it. If you guys are, are not on Darren Daly, so it's Darren Haiti. He, he's written lots of books. Great choice. I'm telling you, like he gives you every single morning, he gives you a five minute video. You can just plug into it and get you know, some extra help every day. And he kind of made the statement. He's like, if, if you believe you'll make it, it's the people that believe that they'll make it. It's not necessarily the optimists that say we're going to be over this May 1st. You know, like some of this, like some of us have been kind of uh, trapped in even myself a little bit thinking that's going to be, you know, over quicker than what it's probably going to be. But believe that you'll make it. Believe that that belief that faith that you're what you're doing is the right thing and you're going to continue on you know i, I think is is really a, a big deal and he talked he, he kind of tells a story in one of his darren dailies uh in the last week or so that talked about a prisoner a prisoner of war in in uh, world war ii that he, he like he was in the prison camp for like years and years and years and he said the people that didn't make it were the people that thought Christmas time comes, we're, you know, we're going to be out of here. It was an optimist that, you know, that really thought that they were going to make, make it through. And then Easter. Okay. We didn't make, we, we didn't get out of here at, at Christmas. We didn't get out of here at New Year's. Easter came and Easter went and they just gave up the will um, and to, to, to continue on and to believe that they're going to make it. If you don't believe you're going to make it, your brain like blocks all of the opportunities that are out there and all the possible avenues to get you to where you, um, you know, need to go in order, in order to make it. Um, I think something else that's just, it's ingrained into me and I think it's ingrained into Jim. I love Jim for this, but like work diligently. Um, I, you guys know me, I, I'm, I'm going to probably quote scripture during this, but you know, go to the anti sluggard, you know, in times, in times that when, when times are good, 
we need to be focused on saving up for, for when times are bad. And, you know, in, in the times that are good and when times are bad, we need to be working diligently, focusing on the things that we can focus on. Um, I put number four here, pray often. Uh, if there's been one thing that, that's definitely been evident is the people that are connected um, to, to a higher power and, and people that aren't. And, and to me, I think that's something that's, it's, it, it'll strengthen your faith during these times um, if you're a person of faith. I also think that we have to look for opportunities. And when I say look for opportunities, it's not just, you know, a lot of the gurus are out there saying this is going to be the best time ever. And I, and I, I get it. Like, don't get me wrong. I do think there's going to be opportunities in the market. Um, we're already seeing, you know, houses that we're already picking up cheaper than what we did a month ago. Um, then there, it's what's really odd and strange is that retail sales are still, you know, nothing's holding up there. And it, we're, we're actually still staying pretty strong on that, on that end. Um, lending is, is becoming an issue in the investor world. Um, so we're, so we're, but, but we are looking at the opportunities from the business standpoint, but also think about the opportunity that you have right now to connect with your family. Don't, don't let that opportunity go to waste. You know, for us, we started a, a prayer meeting every morning at 8 a.m. and every night at 8 p.m. And, and it's an opportunity for us to connect with our family in a completely different way, but also spending those extra time with the kids. You posted a picture, Jim, of you and uh, your grandkid grabbing oh. your nose. And oh. I think it's always funny how they always go for the nose. It's great, right? You call him my honker, Tom. Like, <laughs> always. Pops, we're going to get your honker. And then it's just like, <laughs> on you know it's awesome yeah. but anyways like but those times like we will never get this time back again um and our kids need that time with us I, I think we also have to understand that our kids even though they are kind of resilient they sense our fears and they sense our stress um we need to find a way to talk through these things with them and let them know that hey we're going to get through this and we're going to get through this together in your business, and I know everybody has a different business that's on this. Some people are solopreneurs and they're just, they, they do it themselves. But for you people that have teams and people that you work with, I have used this as a time to invest in my team way more than I've ever been able to. Um, I create, I'm creating a daily video for them and investing into them, giving them challenges, supporting them, even telling them what's going on in our day to day. Um, shout outs every day to the team of what's going on. And through us, through this whole thing for us, there's somebody really loud out there, Jim, but uh, you can probably it. find that's him. Why I, that's why I, I got it. That's why I stopped sharing my screen. I got it. People are still signing in. Go ahead, Tom. You guys find this helpful? Do you feel better just listening to Tom sing and then share some encouraging news? Go ahead. Um, Tom, Tom, you're going to have to do it. Oh, man. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Go ahead. Hmm. Tom, you're going to have to do it. Yeah, when I hit mute all, you're going to unmute yourself. <laughs> I got you. I think I'm here back. All right, cool. But I've used this time to invest in my team and, and I really think it, it's a good time to connect with them, figure out what they're going through. Everybody is going through something different right now. Everybody has a different problem. And, you know, we, we say this, it's great when times are good and we say this, but when times are bad, this is the time to really suck it up as a leader and be like, you know what, everybody else has fears just like I do. And it, it, wherever there's problems, their solutions, right? I mean, I've even heard John say, I'm a problem solver, right? Like that's who we are as real estate entrepreneurs. We are a problem solver for everybody out there that needs to sell their house. Or if you're looking to buy a house, we're trying to help you with those problems. You got to stay focused on those things. But I think emotionally, even spiritually, even physically right now, I think it's a time to focus on how you can add value to those communities that you're already connected to. I think this is also the time to stay humble. So back to the list uh, that I posted, Jim, uh, this is not the time to go pump your chest and think that you know it all. This is also not the time to, uh, like if you're, if you're the person that's borrowing money, it's not the time to go like put your fist up at, at the lenders and not make it happen for them and not be humble. If, if for some reason you're, you're, you're needing forbearance or you're needing to move, this is a time to really kind of come together and just kind of like say, Hey, this is where I'm at. If you're a tenant and you can't pay your rent for some reason, it's a time to be humble. I actually believe that most people should pay as much as they possibly can whenever they can. And we've paid all of our bills and we plan to do so. We, we're not having, you know, that kind of dire straits at this point. We don't think that we're going to. Um, but I, I think it's definitely a time to stay humble in, in all regards. Um, I also think it's very important though to face the facts. 
and to face the truth and to just be, be, be mindful that, hey, like it's not necessarily perfect and we're not going through perfect times right now. But as more if we can actually face what's really true and separate that from what our fears are. That's the hardest thing right now, isn't it, Jim? Like it's yeah. like trying to separate reality from like our perception of what reality could be if X plus Y plus Z actually happens. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I think, but we have to face what's really reality. I know a lot of, there's a lot of people I know, Jim, and a lot of people on this call are in real estate. So we're lucky. Most of the people on this call can actually still do most of their work. But like, I know dentist shops that have just oh, had to completely awesome. stop. Like, you know, some people have had, have, have gone to doing emergency work only, and maybe they're working two or three days. Um, you know, some doctors on the other hand, and our healthcare workers are working 60, 80 hours a week to try to keep up with it. So everybody has a different thing that's going on right now. Um, but I, but face the facts, face what's really true and try to separate that from what our feelings say. You know, again, I go back to scripture, you know, our hearts are deceitfully wicked and that includes fear. Fear has no part in our mind and in, in our, um, our mindset. We've got to push that away just like we have to push down pride every day. Um, number eight, and this comes right from Darren. So I can't take credit for this. This was, came from Darren Daly, but decide to make this crisis part of what defines you and defines how you can add value to the community today. And, and I'll be honest, this is, this is honestly, I'll give you an example, a true life example of myself. And if you've heard my story, you've heard me talk about this. But in 2006 and 2008, I had a family crisis. I moved my family from Crown Point, Indiana, which if you've come been to this area, you know that's an A plus area. It's a great area to live, everything great. And I moved my family to Gary, Indiana. And what do I want to do now? I want to flip the city of Gary, Indiana. That came from the last downturn. And I think there's somebody out there right now that's thinking, hey, this is a downturn. I can make part of my identity. I can make part of the value that I add to the communities and I add to the whole world something that I experienced right now during this. And I would encourage everybody to dig deep. It's going to take some soul searching. It's probably going to take some time to be able to figure that out. But Darren said it, and I have said it as well. Don't just be, don't just think right now that, I only have available to me the resources that I think I have available. Trust me, your network is your net worth. And we'll say it over and over and over again. But what do I add to that, Jim? Do you know what I always add to that? Like, this is something that I always add to this. And right now is going to prove if this is true for you or not. Your network is not only your net worth, it's also your survival plan. And this is, most of the time, we don't want to talk about that, but this is the I time agree. to talk about that. You know, the, the Bible talks about a, a, a servant that he was um, one of the king's, he, one of the king's um, guards that would go out and tax collect and collect for the king. And the king said, hey, you've been lazy. How come you haven't collected? So what did that guy do? He went out and he told all of his network, hey, if you'll pay this amount of money, I might give you a discount. Or what, he, what was he doing? He was spreading his nets. And he was saying, hey, I'm creating my plan B. David Phelps talks about that all the time. Have a plan B. And that, that's what our plan B should be is our network. If, if right now, if you're not reaching out to your network to try to get help and try to gain encouragement or maybe to find new lenders if that's what you need, because right now a lot of the banks are, are going belly up. I mean, they're not going belly up, but they're not lending right now. So you've got to have, if you're not already in, plugged into private lending, you've got to make it happen now. Your network is not only your net worth, it is your survival plan. I always um, say, no, Tom, too, your self-worth is your net worth first. And right now, I mean, this like every there's so much fear and mongering and bad news that you can take dings on your self worth right now too. So nobody don't lose don't lose sight of your self worth right now. It's more important than ever. Keep your Absolutely. mindset strong. That's this whole discussion. Yeah, let, let let me add this. If you guys haven't gotten this book, I'm telling you, if you're at home quarantine, like this is the best time for you guys to sit down and actually go through the 30 days. It's 165 pages. Um, I'm actually going to be running a special where if you buy it for 60% off, I'm also going to throw in the t-shirt. So, you know, Jim might buy another one just to get an extra t-shirt because he I could, I could do that. I would do that uh, for you, Tom. But uh, anyway, so I'm just telling you like this, if, get through this book and really like define what your purpose is, know what your core values is and kind of make a life plan for you. It re, it's really a time to redefine your whole life. You can rethink your whole business. You can rethink your whole life. Um, it, it, it can be a blessing in disguise. We might think this is all bad, all bad and all gloom and doom, but this can really be a blessing. Um, number nine. Uh, I only got two more here, Jim. So number nine is make sure you continue 
to make all of your decisions using your core values. You know, it's a hard time to actually probably create core values. And we've been preaching on core values for years and years and years, right, Jim? But like, yeah. if you need to continually make your decisions based on those core values. Those should be your guiding principles wow. that you use as filters to make decisions right now. Don't make rash decisions right now. This is not a time to make a whole entire massive you know, change. You need to make tweaks and changes, absolutely. But be careful until you've done some thinking and maybe even gone through this book before you make some massive total life change right now. But make sure you use those core values. Those will help guide you. And at the very end, you know, you know something that I've learned and I, Jim, I know agrees 100% is you cannot be thankful and be fearful at the same time. Those two emotions don't mix. Like one will push out the other. When you're fearful, all the thankfulness that you just thought goes right out the window. And when you're thankful, all the fear goes right out the window. So I think you should make it a discipline every single day to be thankful and express that gratitude to as many people as you possibly can. Wow. Thank you, Tom, for sharing. That was <laughs> the song and, you know, and then, and then all the words of encouragement were great. Somebody want, uh, type in the box there, if you can, Tom, the name of the book, where they get that, maybe your website, whatever it is. Oh, sure. They can go to goodsuccess.com um, and then, or they could, it's, it's the 30 days to good success journey. And Chandler, you saw Dave Steck last night. I'd like to talk to you in a little bit, maybe about that, if you can hang on with us. Um, all right. So that was good. Would you guys feel encouraged? We want you to feel good. We want you guys to have hope. Um, I do. I feel more encouraged, Tom. Thank you. Let's see. Where was I? I have a question really quickly for Tom. Go ahead, Tyree. Very investing as well. What, what areas are you, um, are you in? I'm in Northwest Indiana. Tyree, where are you? I know you're in that general area, but where? Yes, um, I own I own a a, du a duplex in Gary, and oh. I own a single family home there as well. Um, nice. I listen. Don't don't ask me about the geography of it. I just know it's in Gary. It's all right. <laughs> and maybe Tom, you might want to put your email in the chat box or something. Absolutely, I'll totally do that. Yeah, you can reach out to me, and I'm I'm always a buyer. Awesome. But I was I was reaching out to Tom because I actually I'm starting on my duplex on Saturday. As a matter of fact, they're going to tear the roof off and replace it. I didn't know if you had a, a contracting team um, there already, but I'm always looking to um, just mix my network with new contractors or mix my rehab with new contractors. Nice to see if I can get a better result than I did the last time. Okay. That's yep. good. Just go ahead and share Absolutely. your contact to each other. I mean, I know you both. So if you need me to, I can connect you both. But we'll do. Okay. Thank you. Share it in the box there, Tom. would be good. So the question I'm getting all the time is like, what's the latest news? And when will all the new opportunities appear? I mean, I guess that's what Dave Steck was on talking about last night. That is the that is like the big question, right? But I think you got to. I think it's good to pay attention to what's happened, but don't let what's happening create fear either. Okay, so this is like the latest unemployment. We've got 22 million jobs lost, which is up near 13, actually closer to 17 percent unemployment at the moment. Hey Jim, they said uh, this morning is about over 26 million. Wow. And then think about it, in Orlando, Disney just laid off 43,000 people. Um, so there will, there will be opportunities created, but personally, I think it's going to take a little time. Here's the other thing to keep in mind. I wanted to show this. Bo, you actually shared this when I was on, when I was on Zoom with you last week, Bo. Do you remember this? Um, he shared it and it said this from the Federal Reserve, four in 10 adults if faced with an unexpected expense of 400 bucks, either could not cover it or would be having to sell something or borrow money to get through it. You couple that with this, you know, 17% unemployment. And by the way, with, with all that unemployment, think of all the 401ks that are gonna need to get transferred. That's a whole nother opportunity that's gonna be created uh, besides distress situations, just saying for people that, that need access to money. Um, keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> and then coupled with this, the four in 10 people can't handle it. So, and so we've talked through that. So I want to talk through some of this stuff, like notes. 
landlords, wholesalers, flippers that are struggling, private lenders, what, what we should be like looking at now to stay on top of all of this. Um, Gordon, are you there with me? Are you on? I am. Let's, let's, you start with, let's start with notes. And I like talking to you anyways, because you're in California. And I think sometimes California is sort of the leading edge of what's, what's happening. What do, you, what do you see happening now, Gordon, and what's coming down the road? Actually, I was in California, and then Elon Musk said, would you like to take a space shuttle up to the space space station? And I said, fine. It seems safer up here and plenty of toilet paper. So, Gordon, I haven't seen you in a while. You're looking good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I Thanks appreciate for that. Thanks tuning in. Well, you know what? I came on your meeting two weeks ago for the first time, and I said, for the last four or five years, I've kind of drifted away and uh, just didn't do much. Um, couldn't find product and yeah. kind of lost my, my mojo. But I always loved this. I remember back in 08 and 09, Walter Wofford's groups and the different groups. I used to love the trips yeah. and the people and the challenge, frankly. I mean, it was a big challenge, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I, frankly, I, so here I am um, thinking that I've kind of faded away, but um, guess what? It's back. So um, to those who don't know me, just real quick overview. I'm kind of the bad debt guy is what I got known for in the last, in, in the last go round. I wrote a little book called Performance Anxiety, How to Make a Fortune in Non-Performing Notes. And um, just a real quick, if your question I think was um, about the market now in notes, et cetera. I got several calls from my borrowers this week. And once again, when I fix a note, it's usually a bad note, which is why I bought it in the first place at a discount. And they never really are stellar first shelf kind of notes. They're still sub performers. So I got several calls. And frankly, I was expecting some. I said, you know, I haven't heard from my borrowers. I'll bet I'm going to hear. And I did. A couple called me and one was a woman and she said, you know, I've lost my job. And I, she said, you know, what's story? And I, I said, you know, I said, as we've always talked about, I said, a human being, not a bank, owns your loan and that's good. I said, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to do what it takes uh, to tell me the story. You know, I know her story from the past. She's in, she lost her job. I said, here's the deal. I said, we'll just take that payment, move it to the end and let's hook up, you know, next month. She, she's a good solid payer. She's a good person. She's honest. So I, as the government is saying, and I want to define this word too, if I can, forbearance. I forbore this month's payment and put it to the end, which I've done many, 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 many times. And it's simple. It's not a big deal. And it's what we're talking about. And I think that's the one most misunderstood word and the most important word in this new reality. And I'll talk about that later, but if I can, but Another borrower called me and I did what I think is one of my better skills. I shut up. Um, I, I, I was thinking, you know, okay, here he goes again. He's going to call me and say he can't pay. He's got a problem. He calls me and I just said, hi, Tom, um, can I help you? And I didn't say anything about anything. And he said, you know, he says, I want to talk to you about the late fees da, 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 over the past six years. And I said, okay, he had it. He's retired. There was no issue with any payment issue or anything like that. He just had a question. So I didn't immediately jump in and assume he had a problem that I had to fix. I just shut up, rolled with it, and it was fine. So that's a lesson that I've learned is just to, to be quiet, and, and I was. But th those are two instances of what I call um, the, the new issues out there, which, you know, bad debt, a lot of people have debt. They have tenants, they have borrowers, whatever they have. There's a whole new field right now of, of notes that maybe not right now, but over next month or the month after or the month after are going to be challenged. These people, I mean, the world has changed. As we all know, I don't even say that. That's why I'm out here. It's safer out here. Um, but, you know, well, bad you debt. You talked a little bit about forbearance, and a lot of people are getting the opportunity to do forbearance on their personal mortgages, for instance. Yes where they can take a few months off. And some banks are gonna rework those loans and put them at the end, but others also have balloon payments due in 90 days. So what's gonna be the effect of that when that balloon payment's due and a lot of people can't make that payment? So that's a great question. And let me just start by saying that I'm not a lawyer or a CPA or Indian chief. I'm really just a guy here. None but of us are giving legal or tax advice, got it. Yes, you yes. I want to be real clear on that because I'm not giving anybody any direction. I'm just kind of telling you my interpretation of it. Um, for forbearance, okay. If you read 
Here's the way it's written. Any federally backed loan, and consider your bank, they are part of a federally backed loan. Here's what it says. It says for 180 days, and with an option for another 180 days, I did the math on that, that's 360 days, one year, they can, and depending on the situation, forbear your loan. And I've heard different versions of different banks saying, well, we'll do this or we'll do that, we'll do this, we'll do that. They, they are obligated under the federal rules to follow the federal rules. And so let's say I forbore my debt because I've lost my job and I can't make my payment on my federally insured FHA loan on my own home. Can't make the payment. So now in the seventh month, do they say, uh, hello, Gordon, you owe us for six months and next month, seven months, check cash right now. And I said, well, I, I can't do that. And so they're gonna take my house? I doubt it. I really doubt it. So um, the whole thing about the forbearance thing, it's a really important word that nobody understands. And I, I think, you know, I, I, I did a whole thing on it just because that word right now, to me, is the most important and misunderstood word on the planet right now in, in our well, world. If somebody wants to get that content that you created on the word forbearance and what it really means and what the impact is, where would they go to do that? Could you just type it in the chat box in a minute? Um, so I'm a brand new rookie. Um, I can get in this space, but I can't really do Zoom. But um, yeah. Um, it? I'll type it in. Okay. Where, where do they go to get it? Um, so I'm at realestateandnoteinvesting.com, www.realestateandnoteinvesting.com. And that's my website. And you can leave me an email, sign in, leave me an email. I'll address your question. And basically, I'm, I've got a slide on that in a presentation, but I, you know, that is a great idea. What I'll do is I'll post something on forbearance and my opinion of it. Once again, I don't want anybody calling me in three months and saying, hey, they ruined my credit, which they can't. We're, we're all among friends, hopefully. Okay. Right, well, thank you. I appreciate your, your sharing today very much. Um, anybody else in the note space want to give some words of advice or what's going on? Jenny, Jenny, maybe you could unmute real quick. Because I saw what you said there a minute ago about giving yourself permission to slow down. That's not something I'm good at, Jenny. So uh, I appreciate that very much. I do think it's a good time to be a little bit patient. Um, um, no, I'm definitely not good at it either. <laughs> <laughs> I am very much a go, go, go. I am too. Um, but I've, I've been watching a lot. I've been you know, buried myself in, in the podcast and the audio books and everything like we've all been doing, uh, watching social media. And I'm starting to realize there's a lot of pressure on people because there's a lot of really accomplished people out there in the business world, the entrepreneurs that are still making it. And they're saying, you know, this is a great opportunity. We can read a bunch of books and we can interact with our network and we can still do deals remotely and go, go, go. But that actually can apply a lot of pressure to people that may not be in the position to go that hard and fast. And so I think it's important just to point out that you need to do what's best for you. If you need to go and do 10 deals a day, get after it and that's great um but if you need to take this time to back off a little bit and do some uh, either just more education or uh, just internal work like learning how to slow down <laughs> um that's a perfectly acceptable thing too and i just want people uh whoever needs to hear it to realize that both are good options and you just need to do what's good for you so Jenny, I mean, that's a pretty profound thing for a young person like yourself. I mean, how old are you again? Uh, 29. See, I know you were in your 20s, so I'd get away with asking that. So I think, I think that's a great chunk of wisdom to share with people, and it's so hard to just slow down. How are, how are things looking in the note space from your perspective now as we go through this? Right now, we are not jumping in any direction. We, um, we were lucky enough to have several of our assets liquidate before all of this uh, health and economic turmoil hit. Yep. And so right now we are sitting and watching. Uh, we've actually had 
really good performance from our existing notes. Um, the people that have had trouble are reaching out. Uh, we've tried to get ahead of the curve with our servicers and make sure that they had the information that uh, of what we want to do on any of our forbearance plans before the borrowers called in. Uh, but really, we haven't seen a lot of pressure from them, and uh, people seem to be uh, doing all right through this. Uh, yeah. We are anticipating probably about eight months from now, we'll start seeing more in the non-performing sector. I think that's the time frame of I do too. How, how long the, the health crisis is going to go on, people have their reserves, and then things start going wrong. Um, so I think that's the time frame of when we'll actually see more of the workouts come into play. Okay, I agree. All right, Michael yeah. Jake, I'm thinking of you. I see you on here. How you doing? Doing good. Um, <clears throat> it's good to see. One you. thing I was going to add to Jenny's comment is it's hard to be sitting on cash and see some of these deals that were. Uh, say you can pick them up for 15% less than you could a month ago or 20%. Uh, they look really good, but the money wants to burn a hole in your pocket. Yet, if you wait another six months, you may be able to get that same deal for 50% of what you were paying. Uh, and that's what I think is gonna be coming about in the note space <laughs> for some of them. Okay. I see you popped up on my screen. How are you? Jim, one thing I would say to people, if I, if I may uh, yeah. share a, a failure I had lot this month, I guess, last month, uh -huh. um, we were very active and very proactive in sending out letters to all of our tenants, and we weren't very proactive in sending out letters to our borrowers on the note side. And we had a really high success rate, almost on par with what we typically get in our rental portfolio. And I think it was because we were so active and explaining to people, you know, we're requiring documentation for COVID layoffs or concerns or reduction in hours and things like that. But we didn't clearly stay, you know, to Gordon's point, there's so much stuff in the news right now of forbearance and don't pay your mortgage and everything's okay but they don't understand that the notes that I hold are not backed by FHA and, and Fannie, Freddie, all this type of stuff. And so I didn't clearly um, articulate that to the borrowers. And I think my results were typically about 95% payment. And last month was 74%, which is the lowest we've had in, in forever. So, um, so we're going to actively be sending out notices and obviously we'll work with people. We don't want to jam people up if they have true hardship, but I think a lot of people just didn't pay because they watch the news and not understand. Mm -hmm. hey, we are not FDIC insured. So if you have notes, I would encourage people to be proactive in Community. writing a quick memo to them and sending it out or putting it with a statement to say, this is what's going on and, and here's how your loan particular works. So just, uh, learning curve that I had to share. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, Justin, you've also invested in a lot of assets in multiple markets. What do you see coming down the road as far as like better opportunities six months from now? Like what markets will you be looking at? I mean, we're, we're just staying the course with, with the seven markets that we're in right now. Um, we've expanded about as far as we want in the mobile home space. Obviously, we'll, if it's a big enough asset, then we'll look at other areas. But our infrastructure is um, at a point now where it's kind of set it and forget it. And so we're going to just kind of put that stuff on cruise control. We're still, we just wrote an offer and purchasing a, another house in Pensacola, Florida. So we're still acquiring in those markets. But we're not uh, going into anything new. We are looking at, on a personal level, some higher end uh, investment properties. I live in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. So looking at Steamboat and Breckenridge area, which me and my family love to go ski at. And I think there'll be some opportunities in some of those <laughs> people that got jammed up. Um, I have a house in Belize and we've lost $30,000 in income just this month alone. 
Airbnb. You know, I have to believe there's a lot of people in these uh, hiring properties that the numbers work if they have stays and, and bookings, but obviously it doesn't. And I think that tourism is going to take longer to recover than some of the other stuff because people aren't traveling or they're RVing and doing local trips instead of, you know, flying from Australia to Breckenridge, right. Colorado to go skiing. I think that's going to take longer. So I think there'll be some more pain there and some good opportunities. Hopefully, you know, my idea and the marketing we're putting out there is for subject to properties where we can take over their loans and kind of go that direction and hopefully take over someone's problem and stand it up for a while with our capital and keep them out of foreclosure, but also have a great property in an area that me and my family like to go regardless if we get renters or not. So. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And you were on the, the call with Michael Jake, Michael say hello too, and John Schaub this week, right? Yeah. Yeah. You and I were, that was, that was a really great call. Did you agree? I did. Yep. Yeah. Michael, that was great. Thanks for doing it. Um, so I had a couple notes from there I was going to share, and Justin or Michael, if you guys have anything you'd like to share. John Schaub, somebody that that I learned a lot from way back when I was going to Jack Miller before he died, him and John Schaub and Peter Fortunato and Jimmy Napier and beautiful Pensacola, Justin, <laughs> invest in debt. We're all there together. But here's some of my notes from what John Schaub said. He said, always, uh, always do long-term thinking. There's going to be um, an opportunity coming up um, where you can get better assets than what you've been able to. Don't hurry. Be patient, like Jenny was saying. Those are the best opportunities will be coming. I liked what he said when somebody asked him about diversifying his investments. He said he diversifies to cash. Also comes in handy uh, during difficult times. He said it's a good time if you got weaker houses not performing, good time to get rid of them as quickly if you can. Uh, what else do you say? He said, if this is your first recession and you don't have a playbook, realize your first one's going to be the hardest one. Um, tighten your belt and get ready. Buckle up and uh, get, get through it because that can be a challenge as well. He's been through several. So Michael or Justin, if you have anything else you sort of remember him saying, feel free to share it. I thought it was a really good call you had, Michael. Thanks. No, that was a good summary. <laughs> All right. Good. All right, awesome. John's just always lots of practical advice. It's it's not super complicated. Just uh, you know, I always you know one of the big takeaways from John is is you know buy better assets. You know, it's the dirt that is actually going up in value, and the house that's wearing out. And uh, you know, in this, I would I would look to find some of the you know better assets in your in your markets. You know, not just you know, flip for flipping sake, buy, try to, you know, hunt out and find the best assets you can that are going to make sense for your market. Nice. Well, and also the, you know, something that John always says, and I've kind of taken to heart is, you know, the, the long game and the steady game will win. So even if you buy a house today and you say, oh, well, what if the market goes down and that house drops 20 or $30,000 in equity? Well, that's not a problem if you're going to hold that house for 10 years because it'll still grow up and be a good asset, you know, versus trying to make quick money. Um, and in these times, you know, as John says, and I was kind of alluding to, you know, there's more opportunities for creative financing, for doing subject two, for doing owner carry, for doing a carry back second, for doing some things like that, that maybe people wouldn't have been open to before, but now they have a pain point that would open up a lot of those conversations. Excellent. Hey, everybody, there's a lot of great stuff going on in chatting. Um, and by the way, everyone's going is talking about your book now, Justin, which is The Abundance Effect. Yeah, look at that smile, looking good. It's a, it's a great book. You guys need to pick it up on Amazon and read it. It'll help you with your mindset, won't it, Justin? I, I believe it will. I've had great feedback on it. So if uh, if you haven't read it, then go get it and read it while you're hanging out or listen to it on Audible or however you listen to your, your stuff. I'm typing it in. It is a great book. I, I do highly recommend it. I remember I read it when I was on a beach. It was really good. It definitely like right now you need books like that. So that's a good one to go back and reread if you've read it <clears throat> before. Okay, great. Thank you guys. Um, I got a couple other notes here from uh, 
Daniel Clayman, who's also a partner of mine, and he's, he had a really good post this week. I just wanted to share some of it, but how this is going to sort of be around for a while. This isn't going away, no matter what the protesters say in the next week, unless you're in Georgia, of course, which is ready to reopen. I need to go, I need to go get a haircut. Anybody else? I actually, Cheryl cut my hair on the uh, back patio of my house, and uh, she learned to do it off YouTube, and I don't think it came out that bad, do you guys? Um, so here's what Daniel said. He said, we're not getting back to pre-COVID employment levels for many, many months. You guys agree with that? A lot of businesses won't make it. They're going to get left out of the PPP funds. A lot of homeowners with mortgages will end up in trouble. The deferment can be a trap. If you hold rentals, you might be fine as long as the government money keeps flowing. Lower income rentals, uh, people losing jobs are going to be a challenge. People who are entitled and think they go on rent strike will be a challenge. If you hold commercial rentals, you got some pain coming. He's offering some deferment and maybe even some rent forgiveness in those areas because saddling them with five months of back rent's not going to work for them. If you're in the market for new rentals, the best deals are coming. Be patient. How many times have you guys heard that today? Be patient. They're coming. If you're fixing and flipping, watch your market carefully, adjust your offers, and be smart about the deals that you do. Just good sound advice, I think, guys. All right. Um, let me go back. Uh, who is who has a landlord issue um, collecting rent or something that you need help with? How did your rents come in this month? Everybody kind of make it through? I think May is going to actually be a bigger challenge to you guys. Uh, personally, I had one tenant who lost his job. Andy tested positive for COVID, but uh, he paid half on the 1st and half on the 15th. I waived his late fees, and uh, I think he's going to be fine. Um, Susan said, my rents are coming in slow, but good. Buy some now and buy some more later. I'll pay Chandler. Yes, April was great. Amy Schmidt, it is good, located near Hershey, licensed agent by and hold. Yes, Amy, I appreciate your comments in our Facebook group. Rudy said he's at 70% for April, expect lower in May. Martine's got all of them but one. She's always late anyways. So it looks like, looks like you guys are getting in. Does anybody have an urgent rental need or a tenant issue you need help with? Dave Bernecki made a great comment there. Watch for that one. All right, Beth Hedgecock, I am glad to see you on here this time. You missed it last month um, by accident. I, somehow you didn't get the email, so I'm really glad you made it on. So if you have an urgent need on a rental, type it into the chat or um, just unmute yourself. We'll be happy to talk to you. The other thing is uh, private lending. If you guys have active loans that are out there, I think it's I'd be happy to talk to any of the private lenders. I see some folks are uh, renting or lending. Barbara, it's good to see you on here, by the way. But I think if you're lending, it's a good time to communicate with your borrowers, see how their rehabs are going. If you're in an area that's in like total lockdown, like Amy is in Pennsylvania. Amy, am I right? Can you unmute yourself, Amy Schmidt, real quick? And so I can get a better feel for what's really happening in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Hey, Amy. Um, hey um, we just had a, a Senate bill, House bill that we tried to pass last week. Governor uh, vetoed it on Monday, um, uh, shutting down. We've been shut down. Real estate has been shut down since March 16th. We have not been able to show houses or property managed uh, doing rental uh, showings or anything like that since March 16th. Um, and now what the House and Senate are doing is, is they're introducing bills in little chunks. So we just got contractors approved. Our contracting was shut down as well. Wow. Um, unless they got a waiver, which was very arbitrarily given in the state of PA. There was no justification for why people got one and why people didn't. So um, they are going to kind of tackle each. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things that are still shut down. They're, so they're going to chunk them out and try to keep pushing and pushing for more opening as we go here. But contractors just won last night and they're gonna start opening next week. And I'm hoping real estate's right behind. <laughs> so since March 16th, there haven't been any home sales? Um, um, I, uh, I literally sold my, I, I do everything as you see in my chat. Um, I literally sold my flip uh, virtually. I had, I, I was scared to put it on the market because I thought, you know, 
but I need to sell it because I'm, I'm actually lending from it, uh, from a, a money lender. So we put it on the market. We got four offers in 24 hours, sight unseen, just wow. from the video and our photos. We have such a housing shortage. So it tells me, I don't know how you guys are, but like here in, I'm in Pennsylvania, we, we need, like, we need these houses on the market. Uh, there's people that need housing and, um, it's, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. So I actually that's, sold the house. That's a good point, Amy. Uh, I'm glad you made it because the low inventory, is, yeah. at least here in Virginia, has um, houses selling very quick. I sold two retail last weekend. Yeah, um, I had price escalations on two of the offers, and I actually got more than what it was listed for. Isn't that amazing? So in the middle of COVID, in the middle of the fact that you can't even go to the house to see it, you're still able to move it. That helps. And, and one of the things I did, I don't know if anybody else out there is locked down, but here's a little tip I, I'm happy to share with you. Um, since we, you know, we did most of the work and we know what we're doing with the house, but we offered a, a one-year home warranty to kind of give that peace of mind to the buyers because they literally can't walk through this house. Like we still have not got clearance for them to walk through this house. So we're just going to give them, gift them a home warranty at settlement so that they know they have peace of mind. So what do they do for home inspections? So... Um, <laughs> That is a very good question, and I'm not I'd sure. I'd love to get rid of home inspections. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> well, people are waiving them. Yeah. Okay, good. They're taking on that risk to get the deal. That's good. Are you able to do closings? Yes. Good. All right, well, thanks for sharing. I really sure. appreciate it. Pennsylvania thanks. has been a mess. It's one of the states that's been really, really tough there, for sure. Um, somebody a minute ago said that uh, they had an issue with a lease option. Um, I don't know who that was. There's so much chat stuff happening, but if you want to unmute, I'll be happy to talk to you. I know there's people on this call right now on Zoom with me that can help you with your lease option issue. Okay. Hi. Uh, my name is hey. Melanie Jacob. I'm first time on this call. Um, my husband and I have been buying notes for about two years. We're located in Michigan. Um, I heard about this call from Don Rickabauer's email. Ah, so. Is Don on? I'd love to, let me see. There are so many people on, guys. I, I have so many friends that are on here that I can't keep track of them. Don's not on. Go ahead, Melanie. Okay, so uh, we purchased this a group of lease options, but this one was non and they and their option was to purchase, the contract was option to purchase after seven years. Well, this option finishes this August. We boarded the boarded them last October, and so um, by the time we connected to them, there was a little trouble with the transfer with the previous ser servicer not communicating with the borrowers borrower tenants that they actually that their loan was sold or their you know their house was sold. So we bought the houses with the warranty deed. The bottom line is that he was already three months behind. Um, I wrote a forbearance for, because we were brand new, there was some transition challenges. So for April, so come April, he was supposed to use his tax return to catch up and he's out of work again. So, um, he's a mechanic. And so we're in, also in the process in Detroit, we need to have rental compliance and the previous owner, big fund did not follow rules for rental compliance. So come to find out they've had inspections. The option, the lease contract requires them to pay up to $5,000 of repairs. So, um, so I'm, I'm in a position where his option is, is ending in August. He's probably going to be more like six months behind. The, uh, the contract states that you either turn it, we were planning on turning it all into a note or it can be turned into a note, turn into a rental or make another lease option. So I, this is brand new for us because we've never really had lease right. options. We've done notes. So any, any input to how to look at this. We I mean, I'd love to hear from everybody. If somebody wants to mute and talk, that's fine. Or you can put your notes into the, into the, um, yeah, we have good equity. So. Box because I think if you've got somebody, whether they have an option to buy or if they're a regular tenant and they're going to be five months behind, that's, that's a huge problem for me. I don't want people to be 30 days behind, let alone five months. So what happens um, if, if you ask them to leave? Like they're not able to fulfill the obligations of the option. An option is the right, but not an obligation. So they have the right, but you don't, you don't have to 
sell it to them, you're not going to qualify anyways because they're not working. So could you just take back the property and go do it again? Could, yeah. That's what I would be looking at. I don't know what everyone else thinks. Okay, that's sort of my thoughts anyways, and you can monitor the chat. By the way, there's three buttons in the chat box um, to the right, and you can right click and save the chat. So if you want people's contacts and stuff, you can do that pretty easily. Um, let's see. Ryan Mellon, if you could unmute, I'd talk to you for a minute. Chandler, I just want to say hello to you too in a sec. Hey, Ryan. Hey. So, Ryan, I just reposted my podcast with you today because I think doing deals virtually is, is really important right now. You do deals while you travel the entire world. Like you were doing deals while you were in Vietnam two months ago, right? Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any, any tips on doing deals um, sort of virtually and remotely for everybody that you could share with people that might be struggling a little because they can't get out and they're worried about COVID and everything else? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question, Jim. I think um, just keeping an our, our eye on the market and, and keep a lookout for what's out there. And um, I think most people have been really um, responsive to us not being out there and meeting with them in person. So like I have a house that's up for rent now and I just went through and videotaped the whole inside through YouTube. And I have tenants who have no problem with just watching the video and then applying through Cozy Online. So we're doing everything virtually. And I will not meet with that tenant until they pass my background and credit check. And we're signing a lease will be the first time I meet with them at the house. So I think it really make, it's, it's helping me to free up my time by not showing properties um, for rent and meeting people out there. So that's, that's one of the ways that I've been uh, freeing up some of my time and it's worked really well. I like it. I appreciate it. When, when do you think you're going to be able to travel again? <laughs> I don't know, man, but as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> How many other hey, man, have to be like cozy. Yeah, looks good. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, all right, so if somebody else wants to talk, just unmute yourself. I'm happy to talk to you guys. Um, we can help you guys with something uh, in the private lending space, the finding deal space, what kind of deals are coming, when. I think the key today, a lot of it is um, being patient. I wanted to, can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, um, We've seen a lot of vacancy in the commercial markets. Your um, not coming through you know, well, Ben. Obviously, residential, I've been told, is that there's a lot of retail selling. So, Ben, maybe you could type that into the chat because your, your audio is not coming in very good, okay? Hey, Jim, another kind of time sensitive matter, Jim, is, uh, and I put it in the chat, but just to make sure people saw that, is PPP, the second tranche of funding, second $310 billion, um, should be getting passed today, and uh, applications able to be submitted tomorrow, I'm told by my banker. So if you missed out on that first tranche, it went quick. Um, my lender is telling me there's about a million applications in the queue right now. Oh so my gosh. he said in the, in the time, you know, that for the last week that the funds have been dried up, obviously banks have been actively, um, loading up files and getting supporting documentation and stuff like that. And so he said that this round is probably going to go as fast, if not faster than the last one. So if you, uh, if you haven't gotten line, I would get in line quick because I think it's going to happen. But they, uh, he said, he said, you know, Chase and uh, Wells Fargo are under quite a bit of scrutiny right now because um, after they did their initial audit, they, they gave the largest loans to people that had the largest outstanding debt to them just so they could make sure that they got repaid, which selfishly I get that, but also not good in the public eye. So start with 
small local banks instead of the Chases and Wells Fargo and Bank of Americas um, to try to secure those funds. So there you go. And Linda, I saw your quibs. Thank you for that. Linda, I saw Linda Brand. I, it's good to see you again as well. I see your note there about the um, repairs for rentals in particular can be a challenge right now. I could just sort of share with you what, what I'm doing. And that is I'm sort of telling my, my residents that we're prioritizing them. Um, and if, if it's something I think I can get them to do over the phone without going into their house right now, we're doing that as well. Like I had, uh, this is just so simple, but like the water wasn't coming through the, the faucet very well. And I had a 30 year old girl that was living there and we just basically taught her how to take the faucet apart, get the aerator clean and put it back together. So we were able to save anybody going in there. Um, and so if I mean, when I'm telling our tenants that we're just really focusing on the critical things like, you know, make sure your heat and air is working. You don't have a roof leak or a water, you know, hot water issue, but little things um, that come up, uh, they're going to have to learn to take care of themselves. Hopefully that'll help you out on that one. Uh, Adam Carpenter has got a lot of good uh, chat going on here. Um, Chandler, can you unmute real quick? Yes. Oh, oh Keith Landkeet's on here. See, there are so many people coming in. I, I don't, I can't keep, there's too many. You need an assistant. <laughs> this is awesome. Page two's got a lot of great investors in it, guys. See Michael Jake and Laura Eubanks and Keith and Ginger. And Ginger, how are you? All right, and Rudy. All right, and Bo. And go ahead, Chandler. What are you seeing? What's going? <laughs> what is going on out there? With because you've got like the online businesses. You've got like the the Cairo doctor corner. You got the real estate, the notes. I mean, you're like you got your fingers in all that stuff. What are you seeing? Well, the doctors overall have been shut down. Um, I know in Seattle, Washington, or whatever, they're shut down until May 18th. Um, so, so they wind up effectively being shut down three months if that continues. Um, so obviously it's, everyone needs a life raft, you know? Um, and so that's really kind of the focus is the life raft, whereas before we all wanted the yacht and the Ferrari. Um, so it's, it's, it's giving clients that and, and also helping them give that piece to their patients because the patients before they come back want to know, Hey, how safe is this place? What are you doing different? Otherwise we've already psychologically broken the habit of their routine visits to an orthodontist, dentist, or a chiropractor. And so we have to get people back in the habit. And so you got to reach out to them, change all your marketing and basically show, Hey, we now do a ultraviolet UV light as you walk in and you're sanitized and so is everything else. And we spent 20 grand or whatever it is. And, and no one else is doing that. We are, you know? Um, and so they start coming back. So there's going to be a lot of that going on. And so that's what we've been working on in terms of the doctors is basically being sure they have a life draft for themselves, number one. And then number two, um, for their patients, as far as the loans go, um, some of them, it was better if they didn't take it because they didn't want to keep the staff. You know, it's better to be lean and they're trying to sell their clinic maybe in a year or two and focus more on real estate. So in that case, you don't want that on the books. We don't want the government and their fingers into it. It messes up the potential sale of the clinics. Um, on the e-commerce side, frankly, it couldn't be better. Um, you know, with so many businesses and Nordstrom's and stuff going under, the chance to arbitrage and resell uh, is huge. Um, the chance to brand and sell supplements like I do uh, online has been our record months. And that's certainly due to, um, you know, everyone having to buy online and looking for certain pieces. At the same time, people are looking for information. So we're out there and supplements revealed a docu-series that went out to millions of people all over the world just last month. And so that literally uh, quadrupled our business overnight. Wow. And then doctors figuring out who are working with the COVID on the front lines, uh, one in particular, Dr. Gus Vickery in um, Asheville, North Carolina, then they take our products and push it out there. So um, and same thing for my friends doing the same thing. Another company, they do a lot of tinctures and their 13 tinctures have exploded. So um, the only issue though that we do see on the Amazon side of e-commerce is, yeah, law for Tom said, yeah, life raft, not a Ferrari. They're looking for the life raft, not the Ferrari anymore like they used to. Um, but the supply chain, um, the, where, where the supplements and things come from, 
once they see the prices going up and the sales going up, they now want to charge more for the next shipment to your manufacturer to get out on Amazon or your website or e-commerce. So obviously that changes the numbers and there's going to have to be more hardcore negotiations. And so there is a lot of people trying to, uh, I won't say take advantage of it because that's the free market system. But well, they are in the PPP uh, arena too. So yeah, that does happen. Yeah, so, so we're, we're seeing a lot of that. As far as businesses, because I know you and I talk about this for sale, they're strong. Um, golly, uh, their numbers are going up. While the you know, housing market may be flat here in North Texas and going down a little bit, certainly the online businesses are, are going up. It's where you want to be and be positioned because everybody's like, you know, real estate maybe, and certainly an online business is where we want to be. Okay, good, thank you. Keith Lanky. I want to mute you and say hello. Keith, how are you doing? Can you hear me, Jim? Yeah, you're like the lean, mean fighting machine. Uh -oh, yeah, we're doing, we're doing awesome here. Camping out in Florida. We got a little freedom down here. Good. Uh, struggle up in Michigan with my contractors, but they got the line down. We're just picking up our tools, so we just work around it. Jobs are moving. Affordable housing is moving. Hard finding good deals right now. People are honkered down, but that's the same thing everybody says. Do you think they're going to get better um, six months from now? What do, you, what do you think? You've been through a Boy, I don't know. I have to see more frames in this movie before I know how it ends up. <laughs> you don't have the crystal ball either. Neither do I. Yeah, oh, I've never been in this one, though. Yeah. But I am frames. capitalizing on the COVID, and I'm loving it, and getting lots of personal benefits, and reaching out to others and helping others that are maybe in a little depression and yeah. it's opportunities for us all to touch others in a, in a human way. That's why I'm doing this zoom Keith. I'm so glad you said that. It's so much, so it's so important. We continue to find a way to connect somehow because we can't see each other in person right now. And that's hard. So Keith, what do you think the impact in the Orlando area will be with Disney laying off 45,000 people? I get, are Ooh, you thinking it depends boy. on how long it goes or if it's really quick or what are you thinking? That's a lot of people. That's a toughie because I was going to buy in the community I live in a, a little bitty tiny house and it's affordable living for someone living in Disney. But I said, I don't know, I, I didn't test the market here, I have to admit. We did one in rural Michigan, we tested the market, it was a, a two bedroom tin box. We put it out for 45 and we're getting highest and best and we're up to 55,000 with 10,000 down, so that's looking pretty good. But I think it's so pocket wise, so many tiny pockets, one is different than the other. Orlando is not rural Michigan. <laughs> that's a good point it's a good point but you love creating cash flow and uh, that works in in every market cycle doesn't it yes affordable housing works all the time just keep making base hits and, uh, and I think that's a good takeaway appreciate that Todd Miller I didn't see you were on here how are you doing so do you think uh, Todd I mean what do you think give us some, your prognosis as a wholesaler about what do you think will be coming up? Continued good market? Yeah, I mean, Richmond's a great market right now. Market's super hot, so you know, we're, I'm the same as you. I mean, I've sold three houses in the last two weeks retail, so um, retail. My, strategy, my strategy basically retail is uh, to keep everything. What's that? Retail market is red hot, I agree. Yeah, so, so I'm trying to focus more on the uh, median house value and below and not get above that median house price right now so we've been having super success with that you know i picked up like three four rental properties in the last couple of weeks as well like really good deals where they've got 50 cents on the dollar and they're already you know positive cash flowing once i cash out refi them even with the higher interest rates that we're going to have to pay to do cash out refis right now um you know they're still going to be you know three four hundred dollars positive cash flow a month and um, you know, then I'll just look to refinance those out again once the rates go back down to, to normal. So it's it's super hot. You know, we're I'm increasing marketing, not decreasing it right now because I think there's going to be more and more deals and a lot less uh, competitors out there um, because of the COVID stuff. So all these people that are you know trying to get into the wholesaling or that have been trying to do it, 
you're going to see them kind of fall to the wayside. I'm already seeing it, aren't you? Yep. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel bad for him, but that's me. I'm just a nice guy, Todd. You know that. You can't quit, man. You can't you quit. Grind. That's why I tell people all the time, don't quit. I will say you grind every day. You work hard. I give you a lot of credit in that regard. Martine, Lori, any of you guys have any questions, comments you want to share? Feel free. Ken and Ginger, it's good to see you guys. Rudy Willis, you're in San Jose, Will, Rudy. Um, I Can you hear me, Jim? Yeah. How are you? Good. Thank you. How are you? Um, we are in uh, the Northern California uh, yeah. Bay, Bay Area base, but we've actually gone up to the mountains for uh, well, we were planning on relocating here in July anyway, but when the kids' school closed, we just decided to go ahead and come up now. So we're up in the Sierra, uh, hunkering down and just kind of uh, trying to manage the portfolio remotely. Nice. And uh, how is, I mean, what can you do in California now? Like, because you guys are pretty locked down. You're able to do real estate and construction, right? Uh, even construction has been has been shutting down, actually, except if it's non-essential. So hospital, schools, uh, and I think affordable housing. But everything else is shut down. Um, cities, SF in particular, are completely just deserted. It, it's it's eerie. It's really weird. No traffic. Nothing. How about? I mean, I'm not here now, but I'm in contact with people who are, and and uh, it's pretty crazy. One of the things I hear about California is like the smog is disappearing. Is that true? Yeah, we're hearing that all over the place. There's uh, yeah, the air quality is improving. LA is saying the same thing. Um, and, and wildlife is kind of going back to its <laughs> natural stage. You're seeing signs of, of uh, animals in the cities that, you, that wouldn't ordinarily be there. It's, uh, everything is just upside down, including for the wildlife. It's crazy. I bet. So I didn't realize, like, so if you, if you were an investor and you're working on a rental or a flip or something, you're, like, really not supposed to do that right now? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, if, if you were like doing, uh, like if you're talking about if you're working on your own flip, like you're actually running your own property, I don't think so. I don't think that's allowed. I don't know how much they're policing it. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like I said, I left the Bay Area about six weeks ago, so I'm not really on um, the ground. But um, I don't think you're supposed to. They're, they're, keeping, they're taking it pretty seriously, especially in the county that we were in, Contrast County. Nice. Well, thanks for sharing. And, and uh, Barbara Cox, would like to get your contact. She's up in... Uh, Barbara, you're up in the position. Yes, hi, Barbara. <laughs> Good we to see you. Other, <laughs> yeah. Barbara's awesome, too. Um, awesome. All right. Guys, I want to close this out, but if you have an urgent need or anything you want to share with people, a word of encouragement, go ahead and type it into the box there. Um, or, or unmute yourself if you have one last question. Kellyanne Porter, I didn't know you were on here. It's good to see you. There are a lot of people on here. If I didn't give you a shout out and, and you're a friend of mine, I'm sorry. It's just because there's just so many people. I can't really go through them all. Suzette up in Seattle. Good to see you again as well. Patty Cabbage. All right. All hearts clear for now. Do you guys want to do this again? Is it helpful? Is it encouraging? Is it help get your mind set straight? Did you guys enjoy Tom Olson singing the COVID song? Oh my gosh. That was amazing. I just want to say, Jim, thanks for putting this together. This is, it's really nice to see familiar faces and have really? a chance during this situation to, to kind of connect with people and stuff. So we appreciate you putting this on. Rudy, you're, you're a superstar too. So I appreciate it. Guys, honestly, there are so many good investors on this call right now that it's very humbling for, for me to host it because you guys can help other people that are in need right now. And that's what this is really about. Just be encouraged. Um, and it's good to share insight of what we think is coming so if you guys want to do this again i'll do it again in two weeks from today um, because i miss hanging out with some of you guys in person some of you i've never met others others of you i know very very well like my brother bill bill you can say hello i don't know where you went if you're still on but um <laughs> bill how you doing good can you hear me yeah you sound good i mean so like even families don't see each other like bill and i I've only seen my brother Dave once in like five or six weeks. He is like, like hunkered down, like in a yeah. bunker. But Bill, I've seen you a couple of times. We're not very often. You doing all yeah. right? Dave, Dave dug a hole and crawled <laughs> in the ground. So, <laughs> but anyway, impressive. I had a little chuckle. You were talking about dancing, and uh, <laughs> I still remember way back at my wedding, we had video of you oh. dancing, like Elaine on Seinfeld, and uh, so you gave me a little chuckle there. Appreciate that. <laughs>
<laughs> hey, everybody that knows me well knows that I don't sing, act, or dance. I, I have no, I don't know what's wrong with me, guys. John Mori, I have no like rhythm, man. None. But, no. I can't. Well, do it. It, it takes a little bit of tequila, then you'll be okay. There you, you go. Guys, no, I don't drink. I mean, I'm like dry, so maybe that's it. But. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, John, I appreciate the dancing and Tom, thanks for the singing and Bill, it's good to see my brother and uh, I'm glad you guys are all doing good. Thanks we for have to have a little bit of humor. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe you could share that video, Bill. Oh, no, Carter. <laughs> ah, no. Hey, uh, thanks for the Netflix recommendations too. And believe me, Carter is your go-to guy for Netflix <laughs> recommendations. He and I have been texting. Um, we both uh, we both loved the he recommended safe to me safe was amazing and i recommended the stranger to him and they're both by the same writer harlan corbin and he's got other ones he's got a huge thing going on with netflix and carter he's gonna have more shows did you see that i have not seen that so i've watched three and that three of his and that's it <laughs> i've only seen two but he he is i didn't realize he's a best-selling author and he's got a, like a series like he's gonna do like eight books or something so there's more to come if you like mysteries all right laurie eubanks good to see you brian rhodes good to see you guys as well everyone have a great day i'll i'll send you the replay but um tom thanks for the song michael jake uh, rudy willis um gordon everybody who contributed today that's what really makes this happen jenny telling us that we have the permission to slow down is something I greatly appreciate. You've got a lot of wisdom for being a 29 year old go-getter because you and Levi are go-getters, man. So hearing you say slow down is okay, is good. All right, guys, go get them and we'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Bye. 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 Thanks, Jim. See ya.